sometimes I don't know what people are thinking. I really don't know what you're thinking. Maybe you're thinking like I'm thinking. Maybe you're not. But sometimes people talk to me and tell me, you know, I don't know why in my day I get so lonely or so, so missing having someone in my life. You know, I really want a boyfriend or I really want a girlfriend or, you know, my relationships haven't worked out. So I really, really, really want a wife or I really, really, really need a husband. You know, I don't know what you're thinking, but you know, maybe you got some stinking thinking going on. And maybe you can't figure out why you're thinking so much about what you're thinking. Maybe it's because you're thinking it. You know, you got your thought process on, you know, you got your thinking cap on, you kind of went to romper room and you kind of waved the magic wand and suddenly your thoughts focused in on something other than God. Now, people ask me, well, how do you how do you get this you know kind of like focus in on Jesus you know well you kind of got to get rid of some of the junk in your life you know all that junk you're carrying in your trunk you know the things that you associated yourselves with oh well, wait a minute I'm sorry let's put it the real way the things you chained yourself to the things that you've taken you know some some uh, handcuffs and you've handcuffed yourself to these possessions or to these worldly ways that you thought, oh, it's not so bad. I can go watch a movie now and then. Well, sure you can. You're free to do anything you want to do. And sure enough, as soon as you come out of that chick flick, you know, that you've been watching, you think, oh, if only my life was like the movies. Right. Or, you know, you just got done watching the latest television program that came out. You know, all those writers, you know, they've come up with these stories, you know, this whole way of looking at life through the prism of just this microcosm that in 30 minutes they're going to solve the world's problems. You know, the family knows best, father knows best, you know, kind of like, you know, the glass house or big brother or American Idol. You know, all those Christian-sounding titles, they don't bother you any, you know. Never mind that it's Jersey Shores, oh, or, you know, The Simpsons. It doesn't affect me. I don't notice it. I don't have any problem with my attitude. Dude. Really. You don't think so? <laughs> I listen to this Christian radio station every once in a while and they say try this experiment try this program for a moment one hour a day don't listen to secular music and I think one hour a day I mean I think they say one hour a week you know try going one hour without it and I think my god you know we as Jesus freaks Went, first thing we did when we got saved was we went through all our albums and threw them away. We got rid of everything that wasn't godly because we knew that the music was ungodly and that if we were listening to secular music, we were infecting our soul with a cancer that was going to grow and that cancer was going to take over our spirit eventually because it would be so powerful that we were setting up little strongholds in our mind little powerful en enemies and enmity against God that would cause us to steer our way and look the other way and then suddenly BAM we get smacked from behind because we caused our own problems we reaped what we sowed can you get rid of the junk in your life? Can you get rid of that junk in your trunk? Or have you become a fat little Christian? You know, now you're so big, you're so fat in your soul and worldly ways that you have like no spiritual strength at all. You really can't get rid of all that you're carrying around. And you become needing America's greatest loser you know, weight loss loser, you know, you got to get on this program and have coaches and churches and, you know, 
everybody in the world listen to the problems you got because you can't solve them because you got the world in the way. You know, you don't have one foot in the world and one foot in God. You've got both feet in the world and you've got barely your nose sticking up looking at God. Huh? What are you saying? But, but, I don't want to be so heavenly minded I'm no earthly good. Okay, then go to hell. I mean, literally, that's what you're going to do. You can't be saved hanging on to a ton of weight and one arm wrapped around a lifesaver and think that you're going to somehow miraculously survive the world. You have to crucify the flesh, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Because the cross that you're carrying is the one you're going to die on. You will die to the world and live unto God. But are you trying to tell me that I need to choose how I affect my soul? You mean I have to try to build up my spirit in the faith of godliness in order to have what you're saying that, you know, I could hear Jesus better? I could listen to his voice? I could walk in heavenly places? I could be seated at the right hand of the Father and see all those heavenly things, you know, so that I could go like heaven tripping instead of earth tripping around, stumbling? You know, all I can say is that the reason why most Christians don't enjoy what they're doing is because they're too busy employed in the world. You know, getting involved in all these worldly things so that they're obsessed with worldliness that they become possessed by, quite frankly, satanic influences. Because Satan doesn't need to attack you personally. He doesn't bother. He doesn't care. As a matter of fact, he's got so much placed out there in the world, he doesn't need to move or lift a finger. He's seated at the right hand of hell itself, literally. And he just sits back and watches how we, as dum-dums that we are, play with fire and see if we can't get burned. You know, oh, let's get tempted a little more than what we're able. Oh, let's try this, you know, let's experiment with that. Let's, let's see how far we can go with our freedom before we're completely enslaved. And you know, grace and mercy will allow you to go just as far as you think you can until finally, guess what? It caught me. The trap snapped shut. Oh my God, look at my soul. It's all wrapped up in emotions that aren't whole. As a matter of fact, they're things that have brought me down to the ground and I used to be able to fly. Oh my God, I wonder why. You see, a lot of times we reap what we sow and most of our sin began with us, not God. It wasn't a trial from the Lord, though he may use it as such. It wasn't a temptation from Satan. It was your own self that decided you wanted to play God with your own soul. And guess what? Your spirit said, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Bam! You did it. You got it. And now where are you? Kind of like Samson, you know, and Delilah. You just kept going back to get some more. And guess what? You got more. It took Samson all until the end of his life to finally turn back to God. Because once he did, he realized, Oh my God, I have given my life over to sin and slavery, and now I'm just working it. The world has got me working it. All I'm doing is working it. Work, 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 slavery, slavery, slavery. I'm stuck in the world and its ways. And so Samson just worked it. But as he worked it, he just kept going around and around in a circle, grinding that stone, you know, pushing that rock so that there could be meal for his captors. And he looked up to God and he said, You know, God, I've wasted my entire life. I was a judge of Israel and... I remember the days of old when I was so strong in the Lord, and so mighty, and I could do anything I wanted to, and I could just snap my fingers, and boom, I succeeded. Now, God, what a failure I am. If you would just give me one last opportunity to die for you, I will take down my enemies. And God granted Samson his prayer, not in the timing he wanted, for it took the end of his life, and it took a long time 
for Samson to finally be chained in the right place at the right time. And as they did, and they were making fun of this fallen man of God, God gave him his prayer. And Samson pulled down the pillars of the temple of a false god and killed himself and all those with him. Now, I don't know about you. I don't like stinking thinking. I don't like dumb decisions. I don't like dumb, dumb ideas, you know. It seems to me like they're going dum da dum 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 da dum 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 da dum 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 And that's what I think about some of these people that, you know, they just go ahead and get on the internet and start playing, you know, with, oh, that's, we're not playing with porno. And we're not playing with, you know, nasty pictures or, you know, temptations. We're just getting our old songs we used to like to listen to when we were kids and we didn't have enough money. Now we just want to enjoy, you know, kind of like having some rock and roll music. Any old way you choose it, it's got a back seat, you can use it. Any old time you use, abuse it. We're just doing the secular thing, you know, just for a little while. Just a little while, Lord. We just want to add this to our resume, you know. Kind of the worldly stuff we weren't able to get away with. But now we can. And we will. And we do. And guess what? You lose. Because it's not a question of everyone going in the rapture. Or some going in the rapture. Or some left behind. The question you ask yourself is, have you trapped yourself Have you become Lot? What is your Lot in life now? Because if it were Abraham, you wouldn't even be in the world in his ways. And you know what you're doing. You have it right in front of you, dealing with the world and trying to somehow compromise with God in what you're doing. Somehow make your life work in the world and in the Lord. And it doesn't work that way. God wants all of your life or none of it. Jesus said, I would rather you be hot and on fire for me. Where have you gone? What happened to your first love when you chose me above all other things and you put away your idols? You put away your temptations and toys. You gave up the sandbox so that you could come and walk the universe with me. Where have you gone, my child? Adam, where are you? But Lord, the grace you've given me, look what I've done. You didn't tell me not to get involved in the world and now it's caught me and I, I, I'm losing it. It's pulling me in. Help, Lord, save me. I can't stop myself. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. When you run a marathon, when you run in one of those long distance runs, when you know you gotta go long ways, you have to plan, practice, develop, and get yourself and your body prepared for that endurance race that you're going to have to go through. You, as a Christian, are on a run in this race. You are going the endurance mile, a long many miles. And if you are preparing yourself by getting rid of the world and its ways, you won't make it. You'll run that marathon, but you'll quit before you finish. You did run well, but what happened in the end when you sat down and you didn't finish? You didn't come to the end of the race. Having begun a good work in you, Jesus is faithful to complete it. But what will you do when he says, you only got 50 more feet. Come on, get up, get up. You're almost there. Don't give up now. Come on, you can do it. Are you playing with God? 
Are you pretending to be a spiritual Christian when in reality you're just totally carnal and you're not walking with God as you should? You know. You choose it every day. What will you do when one day you find out you lose it? Have you ever gone on a cleaning rampage to straighten up your home or your office? Did you enjoy pitching junk, straightening objects, and organizing materials so that you could find them when you need them? You may need to get on a Holy Ghost rampage and do the same thing in your life. Say, I've had enough bondage. I'm tired of being in the world and of the world and with the world. I've had enough negative thoughts. I'm tired of thinking about everything else except Jesus. I want to bring every thought into captivity of Christ. I've had enough of the lies of the devil telling me that the world is the best thing for me and that I can think positive without thinking about God, that I can have karma without developing the work of the Holy Spirit in my life, without allowing Him to convict me of my sin. I don't have to think of sin and my failings. I only have to think good thoughts and envision myself as perfect. I'm not going to have any more bad days. Huh. I'm not going to be discouraged, depressed, or despondent. I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm going to be all that I can be without really giving my life to Jesus. Jesus is ready to help you live life to the fullest. But they that come to life must first believe that he is and he's rewarded them that diligently search him and seek him out. All that come unto me, Jesus said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. But you must come unto me. Today, if you really choose to listen, look around you. Are you listening to the wrong things in the world? You know, like this car that's been on all night, you know, just beating its own warning sign, its own loud alarm, because nobody knows to turn it off. The owner has gone his own way. And he's ignored the things that are causing everyone around him to be challenged by his obnoxiousness. As a Christian, as a born again Christian, are you heeding the warning that God has given? Are you listening to the call that God has put on your life? Are you obeying the word of the Lord as he's spoken to you? Or are you listening today to something else that's going to lead you astray? The choice is yours of what you listen to. One will give you a headache. The other will prepare you for heaven.